Thank you, thank you. So first of all, uh, you can call me Mardi instead of Mardi and Sheputra, right? Uh, so basically, Tada is actually uh, our mission is uh, how we retaining customers seamlessly to increase sales for the omni-channel business. Because these days, uh, many brands uh, would like to put their position as the omni-channel, of, offline to online, online offline, right? And how they can create the customers' uh, journey become uh, more seamless, right? Uh, just a quick context, um, because of this COVID-19, uh, actually what we've seen, uh, this has accelerated everything. So if you see there is a, a, a steady period of time uh, when the world is having economic uh, recessions, right? So one of the things that we noticed since 1945, uh, there are uh, 12 recessions and happening every like 5.9 uh, years or six years, right? And the COVID-19 actually uh, facing up everything, right? Uh, so we have like 28 uh, a financial crisis and so on and so forth, right? And another data that we found also in the market is actually uh, these days, uh, brand or business having a very, um, uh, very restricted of cash flow, right? So if the COVID-19 come like uh, this time, uh, when uh, the revenue is declining, if they don't have any uh, digital or online business, where depending on the offline business, hence um, they will be uh, having a short uh, a runway. Uh, either they're gonna lay off the people, uh, they need to cut uh, any cost. Uh, if your business is attached with the most, you need to close on the most because the traffic is not there. So this is what, what we notice uh, in the market of, uh, on the how, the business uh, uh, having the cash uh, in running their business at this point in time. And uh, people behavior also changed during this crisis. Again, uh, brands will preserve their cash because cash is the king now. And at the same time, customer also very, will be very attentive, very, uh, very put a, a, a big consideration in which product or in which brand that would like to spend their money, right? Because uh, there is an uncertainty ahead of them, right? So this behavior we also uh, see uh, changing during the crisis itself. And uh, if you look at like US uh, market, the unemployment also keep rising. Uh, this is also happening in Indonesia. And uh, we also see the, the, the same trend uh, across Southeast Asia uh, market, right? So again, COVID-19 is bringing a tremendous uh, impact to the business and impact to the customers, uh, whereby unemployment keep rising and people become more uh, selective in spending their money. So again, during this crisis moment, how the brand actually to create uh, their strategy. So uh, I would like to make an analogy like a football or soccer, right? Whereby you have an offensive and defensive strategy. Uh, the offensive one is actually uh, how you can acquire the most effective way uh, with the low cost, right? Because everyone um, dumping their money in the so-called digital space. Uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, SEO, SEM, GDM, all of those things, uh, people spend their money into the uh, online channel. And how you can create defensive strategy, basically to retain your customers, right? And how Tada is doing it? So basically, uh, we are uh, providing an end-to-end -end customer retention platform, uh, create a customer journey that is seamless for the customer itself and a truly omni-channel. Uh, the first one, when we do the retention, basically how you can capture customer information uh, in store, uh, website, social media. So basically any kind of a channel the customer interact with your brand, uh, you can acquire them, get information from them. And the information that will be captured also depend uh, how deep and how personal the brand will have the engagement towards the customers. Some brand would like to have a name and mobile number. Some brand would like to have like a date of birth, email, domicile, so you can have a better personalization. And once you capture those information, how you can uh, manage those customer data platform and you combine with the transaction behavior. Uh, you can see the customer attribution, customer scoring. Uh, and we're talking about retention, people thought about loyalty point and transaction, but actually you can do more than that. Uh, you can do the experience survey, redemption preferences, churn analysis. So basically this is related with customer scoring. And in Tata itself, uh, when we do customer scoring, we see from four parameters, uh, recency, frequency, monetary or spending, and advocacy, right? Uh, purchase uh, referral activities, and subscription metrics. 
So when we do the personalization of engagement towards your customers, basically uh, a loyalty or membership, actually a small part of retention platform or a fraction of retention platform. Other than that, you can see the subscription, uh, real marketplace, advocacy, uh, couponing, faltering system, e-gift card. And the most important thing is, I think the, uh, one of the uh, interesting idea is the social commerce, uh, which I'm gonna show you also the video uh, one of the best case study that we found in the market, right? And referral, and by the end of the day, how you can connect to your customers uh, using email, SMS, and push notification, right? Uh, just a quick one, basically, uh, we are trusted by more than 400 plus uh, global companies across the market, not only in Indonesia, but Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, and we are also pipelining to uh, United States and Australia. So when we do a retention framework, basically how you capture and then you segmentize and brand do the engagement and how you can lock your customer to stay to your brand and how you can do the advocacy, uh, whether from brand to customer or customer to customer that already experience your product, experience the services that given by the brand itself. So, uh, and then retention platform, right? So I said there is an offensive, there is a defensive strategy. So offensive is actually uh, how you can utilize your existing customer to become your ambassador. And defensive strategy, actually your existing customer, how you can retain them, uh, ensure they make a purchase towards your brand uh, uh, other than uh, to other brand, right? So those things will be required data in place. So if the brand doesn't have the data about their customer, about their transaction behavior, uh, at the end, they're gonna do a, a, a marketing campaign in awareness, acquisition, a similar thing with acquisition uh, 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 marketing thing, yeah? So let's start with the uh, offensive strategy. So uh, we can optimize your existing customers or your channel, uh, whether it's an agent distributor, uh, to become so-called virtual franchisee, right? So the virtual franchisee business model is actually how you can do the acquisition of your existing customer. So let's say a brand has like uh, 100,000 followers in their Instagram or Facebook, right? And then actually that's your biggest asset. Now, if you can convert those assets to become your reseller or virtual franchisee, let's say 10%, and then you have a 10,000 uh, virtual franchisee or reseller. So this 10,000 will have another network. So for example, Mardi might have like a, a, a thousand followers in Instagram. I have like 10 WhatsApp group in my phone. So if I enable Mardi to become your seller, selling my product, selling my e-voucher, selling my services to their network, so brand will have a deeper penetration uh, to the consumers. So they're not relying on their marketing budget in doing the GDM, SEM, all digital uh, marketing ads. But now you're capitalizing your existing customers and this customer has their own network, which uh, uh, you're gonna tap in into that uh, network. Hence, it will not require any cost uh, uh, from your side uh, for, for marketing, right? But of course, there will be a certain uh, cost structure that you will prepare. So for example, how you incentivize the customers uh, so they can uh, very uh, attractive and very interested to sell the product of the brand itself, right? So they sell to the customers and the fulfillment will be made by the brand itself. And uh, how you can do this kind of uh, virtual franchising model? Uh, so basically you can do the goods, right? Uh, you can do the e-vouchers, you can do the subscription. So I'm gonna share one of the case study that uh, being done in China uh, for the reference. So I hope you can enjoy the video.
Right. So um, that's one of the case study from Cashif China that uh, inspired us to running a virtual franchisee in Tada. Uh, if you see on the Cashif China, basically they can have an acquisition of 2.5 million within 120 days of their uh, so-called pocket franchisee. And they can have also like a 42 million uh, direct sales from their virtual franchisee. Uh, in KFC China, how they would like to scale up their business, their sales, if they depend on the physical outlets, right? So they need to look the location, they need to build the stores, hence it will take some time uh, to do the sales, right? Uh, now they're utilizing the social media uh, in China. Uh, they engage their customers, say, hey, you can also get a point, you can, can also get the commissions, uh, uh, not only from your uh, transactions, but if you're selling our e poacher e poacher of KFC to your family, to your friend, to your networks, uh, you also can get the, the, the reward. And one of the things that actually in KFC China, that they also type up with the gamification. Uh, so there will be a competition uh, in which level that I'm uh, standing for. Is it I'm a, I'm a number one, number 10? So it's also create a competition within the, within the uh, customer itself. Um, why it's uh, uh, virtual franchise is very important uh, and this time and also for long term as the business model that should be considered by brand. Uh, first, very simple, uh, everything is integrated. Uh, we can integrate it with the catalog of the brand, uh, integrate it with the payment gateway. And in the case of Indonesia, we also integrate it with a, a logistic partner to send the product itself. Uh, last investment, again, in this time, in this crisis, if you're asking someone else to make an investment uh, to stock up the product, uh, there will be a reluctant, uh, a less traction from the customer's hands. Uh, all the filament should be made by the brand. And uh, this customer, the reseller, this virtual franchisee, focusing in selling the product, focusing in selling the e-fortures to their family and their networks, uh, hence to get a reward from the brand itself. Uh, the third one will be the technology. So basically how you can do this in terms of customer interfacing, uh, it could be in the website, it could be uh, uh, in the apps, for example. Uh, so uh, it depends on how market sees or the customer interface itself. Uh, more and more what we've seen in the market itself, uh, a web version is more acceptable because they don't need uh, to download the apps, which uh, sometimes it will create a, a, a reluctance from the customer or from the reseller to download the product itself. Again, why now? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the unemployment is, at, uh, uh, um, is increasing and many people would like to find an extra income to feed their family, to feed for themselves, to pay the bills and everything. Hence, uh, it will be a right moment uh, at this time. And of course, it can be considered a very good business model in the long run. <clears throat> Uh, again, people is using the social media, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, in China, I think WeChat, in Philippines, we'll, uh, Fiber or Facebook messengers. Basically, how actually every single individual can uh, sell the product uh, within their hands, uh, within the existing social media that they have in hand. Again, this is a, a, a very uh, a rigid and robust uh, result from the case study in China. Uh, and how does it work, right? So um, basically uh, the brand <clears throat> need to do the acquisition of their uh, reseller, right? So it could be your uh, existing customer, it could be your follower in your social media. And if the brand using a key OL, key opinion leader or influencer, actually this is the right moment also to measure how effective your key OL or influencer in selling your product. Because uh, all of this time, uh, influencer or key OL is very, are related with the awareness, acquisitions, but there is no strong relationship with the sales uh, with the influencer. So let's say now you have an influencer, hey, you can to become your, our filter franchisee and you can share it to your follower, your subscriber, your fans, and you can see how is the attractions from their follower, from their subscribers in making purchase towards the uh, QL or influencers uh, uh, franchise, right? So that's one of the things that you can also see how effective your QL or influencer uh, in driving the sales for the brand itself, right? Again, you can do the via WhatsApp, uh, sorry, you can do via the, the, the website on apps, let's say using a, a website. Um, so in here, I, I have the, my uh, reseller card, for example, a Facebook franchise card. 
And then if you see on the on the orange section in here, sell our product and enjoy our special benefit. Let's say I click that, and then you can see uh, this page on the right hand side, right? So you can sell the whole catalog of the brand using WhatsApp, or you can share product by product. And actually, you can also set the commission or the reward uh, differently for every single product, right? So that's uh, the reward that I got if I sell to Lauren, for example, and Lauren make a purchase. Uh, and Lauren also, we can get like 25% discount or 50% discounts whenever uh, she receiving the, the link from me. And then uh, another thing is actually you can also, uh, if I'm already existing virtual franchisee, I can also asking someone else, my friend, to become a, a, a franchisee. So in a sense, it's, it's a referral, uh, like a member, get member. Uh, but now uh, I'm existing virtual franchisee, I can ask someone else to become another franchisee. If this franchisee managed to sell the product to their networks, and I will get also the reward out of it. <clears throat> Uh, there will be a commission payout, uh, definitely, uh, which you can arrange uh, into uh, a multiple form that you, the brand wish. And uh, you can uh, redeem it like into uh, e-voucher, you can redeem it uh, uh, cash out, uh, which will be handled by the brand itself. So let's say I'm sharing this to social media, right? Uh, I'm sharing this to WhatsApp, and let's say I'm sharing this to uh, Rebecca. Right, so Rebecca will see the link from me. Uh, he will click the, the link, uh, he click buy, and then he will put all the details and everything. And you will see uh, if it is e voucher, meaning the shipping cost will be zero because it will be sent directly to their SMS or email. But if it's physical uh, items, uh, you need to put the detail address and uh, you can pay accordingly. Uh, and then you can make a payment. So at this point in time uh, from Tada, uh, uh, outside Indonesia, we provide a credit card as the payment method uh, for the consumers to make a purchase. Right. Uh, another thing that we also would like to give the flexibility to brand is actually how you can manage the inventory within your hands, right? So if you see one of the item or CTU is no longer available, and then you can take it out from the system, Hence, when the virtual franchise is selling the product, those particular item or particular SKU will not be available again in the catalog. And since, uh, let's say all the transaction is completed, uh, what will happen is actually all the details of the orders will come into the dashboard that we provided. Hence, the, the HQ or the admin from the HQ of the brand can assign uh, uh, each product, uh, the status, change the status, is it new order need to be sent or on delivery or everything is completed. So this dashboard is actually provided the capability of the brand in managing the order uh, from uh, incoming order until the uh, order uh, completed, uh, meaning sent to the customer through the logistic. <clears throat> and of course, uh, when we're talking about retention, meaning all the data should be in the brand's hand, right? So you can see which reseller, which uh, virtual franchisee is uh, performed the most. Uh, is there any particular customer who actually um, make a repeat purchase? Uh, if only the customer making one purchase, how you can actually as a brand uh, uh, do the engagement, build the communication to the consumers hey, uh, we have another product, please connect with our virtual franchise or resellers so you can make another purchase. So that's the uh, virtual franchise part, right? So that's on the offensive strategy. So what about on the defensive strategy? Uh, how are you going to retain your customer? <clears throat> uh, the most common one is being used is actually loyalty program. Uh, whereby you can do the points collections, time collection, you can do the leveling, you can put an upgrade strategy, downgrade strategy. So basically how you can create a fair uh, business relationship between brand and the customers. And then uh, you can send them the e-vouchers, uh, you can put uh, any reward scheme for specific item. So this is the most, coming, uh, the most common use on the uh, retention, which is the loyalty program. And uh, again, uh, it is important uh, how you can ensure the acquisition is running good uh, for the loyalty program. So the first one, if you're an offline business, actually, let's say for example, for FNB, 
how your staff uh, religiously remind the customer, hey sir, hi ma'am, do you like to become our membership program? Uh, you can put also marketing tools if you're running on the social media, how you can also uh, tie up every marketing campaign with your loyalty program. So that's one thing. <clears throat> uh, the other thing is actually, again, uh, your customer, your, uh, your biggest asset, they already try your product, experience your service. So whenever this customer actually promoting your brand, it has a better credibility compared to the brand doing the marketing ads, right? Because every brand, when they're running a marketing ad, of course, they will get a very high value of the brand itself. Um, with, and and on, on the contrary of the customers, actually, they say, hey, I just have a, this nice dinner, uh, having a cup of coffee and coffee allergy, right? So for example, so if a customer telling something to another, uh, to his or her family, network and family, it will be more credible, right? The credibility uh, is there, right? Uh, so basically now you, you, you have another sales channel or a, a new channel doing acquisition using your existing uh, customer. And through the multiple uh, platform, WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and other uh, messaging or social media platform. And another thing that, uh, should be considered is actually a subscription. Uh, I think the, the, the most successful subscription is Amazon Prime by Amazon.com, right? So back in the days, uh, Amazon created Amazon Prime whereby customer need to pay $80 per year. And in return, Amazon give uh, the customer uh, free shipping uh, cost, right? So uh, regularly, if you're sending like a two days uh, shipping, it will cost you like sixteen point five dollar. Uh, if you sorry, uh, nine point eight dollar. Uh, but if you would like to send it all overnight shipping, uh, it will cost you sixteen point five a uh, dollar, right? And uh, previously, before Amazon Prime, the customer only spent around six hundred and twenty-five dollars. And after they release or launch the Amazon Primes, uh, it increased become one thousand and five hundred dollars in a year. Uh, for that same uh, customers in average. So basically subscription, it's uh, one of the way how you can increase your frequency, increase the spending, and at the same time, brand will get an upfront revenue from the customer itself. The reason why subscription is running very well is because actually a customer is requested to make an initial investment, right? Initial payment. Uh, in, in, in the case of Amazon Prime, meaning I need to pay $80 uh, upfront, right? And hence, as a customer, I don't want to lose and I would like to optimize all the benefit that I got from my subscription program. So um, we have a case study uh, on the subscription program uh, <clears throat> as a reference. So basically this is a, a, a Korean barbecue. Uh, they have like 25, 20, sorry, 27 outlets uh, across Indonesia. So what they did was, uh, hey, uh, you need to pay me $15, uh, buy one, get one. Uh, so you will get a buy one, get one every single day for a year, every single day for a year. And what happened to that uh, uh, customer who subscribed into the program? Uh, initially, the loyal, loyalty members uh, who joined with the membership program or loyalty program, uh, they only spent like $27 per visit. But now uh, they spend like $40 uh, per visit. A reason being initially, if they make a purchase of a zero and meat, right? Now, because they have a buy one, get one, uh, they upgrade their product. Now they are buying the Wagyu meat or the tenderloin meat or the ribeye meat. And on top of that, because they feel, the customer feel, hey, I already got this benefit of buy one, get one. Uh, they also change the type of drinks. And in the f and the uh, drinks will be the, 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 the margin, the, high, the, the, the highest margin in the product, right? Uh, it will create a profitability to the brand. Uh, on top of that, we've seen also numbers of uh, past, uh, packs, right? So uh, a number of people who actually come into this are also increasing because these people actually who subscribe the program, they're bringing up uh, someone else, their family, their colleague, they have a lunch meeting, dinner meeting in this particular uh, restaurant. And another thing is what we've seen is the incremental of the visit. So initially the loyalty members come like once in a quarter. Uh, now it's changing into five times in a, a quarter. Uh, another case study that we found in the coffee shop, for example, uh, 
So customers still paying like $11 per month, right? So initially it's like uh, for a year, uh, this one $11 per month and their retail price a cup of coffee, it's around $3.5. Uh, so basically if you come like three or four times, uh, you already break even point lah, basically. And what will happen, what we've seen in the, in the, in the, in the study itself, uh, initially, the loyalty customer came like 1.6 times in a month. So meaning every 20 days, every 21 days, uh, they come to the stores. Uh, now it increased, become seven times uh, in a month. Uh, so meaning it will be around four days. So every four days, the customer come and redeem their free coffee. And again, because the more often the customer come to the stores, now the staff, the waiter and the waitress have the opportunity to upsell the product, right? Uh, because in order to upsell the product, they need to customer come very often to the stores. So what 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 would happen that uh, two out of three subscribers actually buy food along with the free coffee, whether it's a croissant, whether it's a fried noodle, whether it's a fried rice. Uh, actually, this coffee shop also selling a, 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 a meals, uh, a cake also uh, in their shop, right? So that's another opportunity that uh, can be derived from the subscription modeling. <clears throat> Right, uh, so when we're talking about subscription, there will be two types of subscription, uh, the primary one and the secondary one. Primary my meaning is your primary product, right? If you're selling a, a, a home product, let's say uh, if you're selling a home product uh, and other uh, product other than the home uh, product category, but this home product category has the bigger portion of the sales, uh, we will not go into that uh, direction. What we would like to provide is on the secondary model, it's derivative of your product. Um, there are few types of uh, secondary uh, subscription model, uh, the discount one, coupon, monthly benefit, free shipping, priority pass, or you can build on your own, right? So a discount model such as like Grab <coughs> uh, uh, in Indonesia, for example, they're selling a subscription for the riding and also for the food. Uh, coupon bonding model, so basically you pay like 100,000 uh, rupiah, you'll get a 10 coupons uh, value 15,000 uh, rupiah. So in total, it will be like 150,000. So it's like extra 50% in terms of value that being given uh, from brand to the customer. Monthly benefit model, uh, so basically it's like a gym model, right? You pay X amount of money yearly, monthly, and you will get a, a certain discount of promotions uh, exclusively for those uh, customers. So this is also inspired by Zomato. Uh, free shipping model, uh, I think in Southeast Asia, Zalora is one of the uh, good example that we can use. They also have a, uh, a Zalora uh, program for the uh, subscription, uh, giving the uh, free shipping fee, let's say, for three times in a year, three times in a month. So basically how you ensure that customer will optimize and utilize all the benefit given in that particular period of time. Uh, so another thing is a priority pass model. So you pay something, you get a free product, 20% discount afterwards. So those kind of thing can be done. Or you can uh, have a, another idea in your running subscription. Of course we can discuss it. Uh, what is your jobs to be done? What is your objective? Uh, in running the subscription. <clears throat> and when you should start the e-commerce loyalty, uh, basically it can be a loyalty program, it can be a referral, it can be a su uh, subscription modeling, uh, including also the field of franchise that I mentioned earlier, right? Um, there are two things that how we can do on the uh, e-commerce. Uh, first, there will be an integrations uh, between the retention platform uh, and the website, right? The second one, I think these days is coming more and more uh, a plugin. Uh, so I think there is two uh, e-commerce builder is quite pop, uh, a very popular and uh, rising very significantly is WooCommerce and Shopify, right? So if you're using your e-commerce in WooCommerce and Shopify, there will be a, plug, a plugin that can be embedded in your website. And basically once it's uh, available, it can be integrated with your system, <clears throat> right? So there will be like a floating buttons in your website. If you click it, it will sh uh, uh, show the, the membership uh, page or the subscription page or even the virtual franchise page. 
right? Or you can, again, you can put on, on your banner, um, basically in your website, in your mail, so everything uh, can be integrated uh, with the system or if you're running the retention uh, platform. <clears throat> Uh, Marty, just to check with you, sorry to interrupt you right here. Um, how long do, more do we, would you need to wrap up your presentation? Uh, another one minute, Lauren. Okay, sure. I'll be back then. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so basically, again, all those data, all those information that will be provided in the dashboard, uh, basically, it will provide you a single view of customers. And there's also a capability in doing the campaign module based on the customer segmentations uh, that you like to wish to uh, and get to your customer. So I think the, the customization is very important. Uh, the personalization is very important and how you can create a customer segmentation. Because by the end of the day, you would like to create a, a right content, right offer, right material to the right consumers at the right time through the right channel. Yeah. So basically, this is what we provided, uh, membership insights, uh, single view of customers or your detail, how the uh, transaction pattern and behavior, and how you can create a campaign uh, automatically or even on an ad hoc basis. <clears throat> uh, again, personalization of email marketing so you don't see hi customer, but you can see hi Marty, hi Lauren, and other uh, based on the customer's name. And by the end of the day, is actually how you can create an omni channel rather than a, a multi channel. Uh, you might have a different, different platform in your system at this point in time, but the database is scattered all over the place. What you like to do is actually how you can have an omni-channel, all data from offline, online, social media can be available in one single unity platform and your team can manage those information, get the insight and make an actionable items to drive more sales and revenue towards the brand, right? Uh, again, uh, what we're providing is actually uh, everything become unified system and how you can optimize uh, and maximize your omni-channel with 360 customer view. And if you have any question, uh, uh, we also open for one-on-one -on -one consultation. You can uh, scan the a QR code to get some ebook and uh, all the details, uh, or you can visit our uh, Bitly link, or you can send the, uh, the, the email to info at yustada.com if you wish to have a further discussion uh, with our team. I think that's all, Lauren. Uh, I hope I'm not uh, over than one minute that I promised earlier. <laughs> Um, well, it's a give and take. It's, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of questions for you. The first one is from Kenny. Now, Kenny would like to know, may we know which virtual franchise app to use? Thanks. Sorry, can you repeat again? Yeah, the question is, may we know which virtual franchise app to use? So basically, we're going to create uh, your brand website or your brand apps uh, so that we will provide it. So... Um, uh, it depends on the brand itself whether we like to have a web version or an app version. It can be available in the in the in the iOS or Android. Depends on the brand itself. All right, thank you. Our next one is from Terence. Now, Terence would like to know: Can the product be a service with monthly payment? Absolutely. So uh, it can be done. Uh, again, uh, it depends if the customer would like to have a recurring payment or non-recurring payment. That can be set as well. All right. Um, the next two questions are also from Terence. Now, he would also like to know what is your customer demographics in terms of age, market segments, and etc. So basically, in Tada itself, there, uh, our target audience is very wide, right? So we have a verticals from financial institution, banking, and insurance up to uh, a consumer goods like Unilever, F&B, uh, merchants, uh, fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and everything. So in a sense, actually what we provide is actually a platform to the business because Tada is actually a B2B model. Uh, we will follow based on that brand's uh, uh, customer demographic, right? But uh, to give you illustration, uh, basically in, in, in general, our uh, customer, for example, like age, it will be like uh, 18 up to uh, 45 uh, years old, that's the big chunks. And in terms of market segment, uh, again, uh, it's quite uh, various, and but uh, in terms of gender, for example, uh, what we've seen in the data itself uh, during the retention, a female is more uh, a, a type of gender that actually very engaged with the retention program. Uh, it's driven whether it's from the FNB, fashion, 
uh, for somehow female is uh, the biggest chunk of uh, our customer uh, gender across the brand that uh, uh, act as our client. Yeah, and I think just to add on to that, I think you would see a lot of customer attention in terms of like, um, especially in fashion, because it's very inclined. I mean, we can be girls, we like our fashion. It's, it's a very natural choice for us, just to add on to what you said. Okay, so our next one yeah, is yeah. also from Terence. Terence is on a roll here. Keep those questions coming. We actually have a little bit more time. So for those of you who are still watching, um, please make sure you put it in the Q&A box because I'm actually noticing some questions getting mixed up in the comments here. But our next one uh, is, are business solutions applicable for virtual franchise? I'm not really understand on the question of business solution. Um, hmm. Probably Terence can give a more context. Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, Terence, if you're still watching, perhaps you could elaborate on your question a little bit more and uh, Marty can get back to you. Let's move yeah. on to the next one. This one is from Helen. Now, Helen would like to know, do you have a comparison about the current trend of customer buying behavior in social media compared to other channels? Yeah, uh, uh, so basically more and more what we've seen, it's uh, uh, a social media has become a very uh, high uh, platform to run the uh, transactions, right? Uh, compared to other channel, uh, whether the brand website uh, or a marketplace, for example. Uh, in the case of Indonesia, of course, marketplace is still a big chunk. Uh, brand like Tokopedia, Bukalapak, Shopee, and everything still dominate the market. But we've seen in a, a more and more uh, uh, the social media is becoming a, a very trend, uh, like in China with the KFC, right? Uh, second of all, is actually if you see on the social media, uh, for example, uh, like Facebook, they also start to have a shop button uh, in their uh, in their platform. So again, because the consumers uh, touch point, right? They spend more time in the social media. Hence, uh, any social media try to provide those get those kind of capability, whereby customer can be easily to make a transaction. I think the main challenge will be like this, right? The first one, how the system or the platform itself can integrate it with your catalog. Uh, if you have, uh, if you have like a hundred SKU, right? So basically, you would like to give the consumers flexibility to choose the product uh, across the category. That's the first one. The second one is actually how you can integrate it with the payment gateway. So basically, you don't ask a customer move one platform to another platform. You create uh, another uh, reluctant from the customers and a, a drop of interactions. Uh, in that platform. Uh, lastly, it's actually how you can, uh, if we're talking about uh, physical goods or physical items, actually how the system can integrate it with the uh, logistic partner, like uh, uh, for example, Lala Move, or if you have FNB, probably like a Grab Food, uh, Food Panda, or Zeke, or any players that uh, play in that uh, particular area. I think that's the most uh, important thing. Uh, as the direct number, uh, I need to check first again. I can give you. I I, I cannot give you any a number at this point in time. But the trend is there, uh, whereby we've seen the the hype and the spike on the social media compared to other channel. All right. So Marty, when you get the answer, you can always reply to Helen offline. Um. Now Terence has actually clarified his uh, question, and he was referring to a business service. So let me just read the question out for you one more time. Um, are business service solutions applicable for virtual franchise? Yeah, uh, so I think uh, there's uh, one thing that need to be uh, um, clarified, right? So basically based on the virtual franchise can work uh, on the physical goods, on the e-vouchers, and also on the uh, subscription modeling. So basically those three things that uh, uh, we have in our case study. Uh, if we're talking about business services, basically the business services that uh, Terrence mentioned, like CRM, DI, and everything, basically that's mostly in the SaaS model. So in a way, it's actually on a monthly basis and everything. Uh, can you sell it uh, through the virtual franchisee? I would say yes and no, right? Because usually people who like to have these services like CRM, BI and everything, uh, this is the type of customer of marketing manager, CRM manager, marketing director and everything. So the way how they found uh, how they find and source the information, usually they will go to the LinkedIn, they will go to the uh, Google and find, hey, what is the best CRM tools in the market? What is the BI tools there? And all these players actually already running the marketing ads as well, right? So that's one thing. The second one is actually, um, 
I would say not using the uh, virtual franchise, but I think it could be like a, a, a reseller a strategic partnership. So basically, if you come into a particular market and you like you have a, your a, your BI tool and you like to market this and you don't have any presence uh, in that market, you can partnership with a, a company that really uh, have the same ICP with you, ideal customer profile, and how you can collaborate together uh, in order uh, in selling the product. Uh, so for me personally. Uh, it's a tough one to run a virtual franchise for business services uh, with the example given like CRM, BL tool, uh, and etc. All right. So Terence, there you go. That's your answer. Um, I think you can squeeze in one more, okay? Um, so let's do this one. Have your company selling, does your company sell e-franchise? Uh, I assume this is the virtual franchise platform that uh, we have in Tada. Uh, so the answer to that, yes, uh, we do that. And actually, it was already running for some of our clients of using the uh, e-franchise or virtual franchise that I mentioned earlier. Okay. Well, Marty, that's all the time we have for today. Um, we're going to end your session now, but thank you so much for joining us. I thought that your presentation was very factual and very informative, and I think you've given all our attendees here a lot of useful input. So thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thank you, Lauren. All right, you Bye. stay safe now. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye. Exobytes. Grow your business online.